Hey guys, welcome to my February book haul. Um, I have quite a few books here, but I did not spend very much money on these books. I found out about a book sale a while ago. I did a mini haul over on my Patreon for those books, but they're in here. Um, and the, the books were way cheaper than they said they were going to be when I went to check out, so that was awesome. I returned or brought a bunch of books to my favorite used bookstore and they gave me credit and so I bought some of these books. Some of these are from Little Free Libraries. Some I spent 50 cents on at uh, thrift stores and I think there's one in here that I paid full price for and most of them were very very cheap or pretty much free. So I'm taking a page out of Gloria's book today and I'm going to be breaking this down based on genre. First one I'm going to start with is miscellaneous. Then I've got, uh, I would say like historical mystery. And then we've got classics. Then we've just got historical fiction. And my biggest pile is the science fiction and fantasy pile, which is a genre, or well, at least, especially science fiction, a genre I'm realizing I really like sometimes. <laughs> so let's just get started. This first one is my only middle grade book. So it's in the miscellaneous pile, Once Upon a Marigold. We are actually currently listening to this audiobook in our homeschool, and I've never even heard of this book. So I thought it was really weird that while we were listening to the book, I saw it in the thrift store for 50 cents. So I grabbed it. It is part comedy, part love story, part everything but the kitchen sink. It is a medieval fantasy story about this boy named Christian who ends up living in the woods with a troll. And the only fantasy element really is the creatures. There's so far to my knowledge nothing that has come up that's any like magical element um, and he ends up falling in love with the princess of the kingdom named Marigold and yeah I don't know I don't think this is gonna be like a five star book but we're enjoying it and I just thought it was really cool that I saw the book while we were listening to it. Then I'm slowly collecting some of these books by Ellen Hopkins. So this is Crank. I really I'm gonna try to not collect any more of hers until I've actually read some of them. So they are free verse novels, YA, and they cover heavy topics. I know, I'm pretty sure this one is all about drug addiction, and I do own Smoke, which is the second in a series, so I'd like to get book one. Um, I'm okay with getting that one before I start reading them, but otherwise I would like to read the ones that I have before collecting all of them because they're all big chunkers but they're all free verse novels so there's not a whole lot of words per page uh, but I'm just not sure if they're gonna be too intense too YA or what so uh, I have read a, well just one of her more like middle grade ones closer to nowhere and that one was really good so I'm hoping that these ones are good then my one lone nonfiction here is the happiness project I read this book Oh, when did it come out? I would say like shortly after it was released, many years ago already, and I enjoyed it. So this was 20, 2009 uh, was when it was published, and I probably read it right around then. Uh, its subtitle is, or why I spent a year trying to sing in the morning, clean my closets, fight, write, read Aristotle, and generally have more fun. And I remember just enjoying this book. I do like some of Gretchen Rubin's uh, writings. I really like her Four Tendencies idea and book. And yeah, I don't know. I'm curious to reread this one. It was in a little free library. Figured that's worth grabbing. And if I don't want to read all of it, I don't have to. Okay, this is probably going to be a very controversial book that I picked up. And I'm probably going to hate it, but it was in a little free library. So no harm done. Um, it's big. And yeah, I don't know. I just feel like this is an author that is so popular that I want to try some books by. It's It by Stephen King. Like I said, probably gonna hate it, but if I do, I can just get rid of it. It didn't cost me anything. So this, this is a lot, of, a lot of pages. I don't know how many pages. This would definitely fit my over 500 page. Oh, I'm trying to read books over 500 pages. It's over 1100 pages. Probably gonna hate it. Then I'll just get rid of it. Okay, into what I'm considering historical mysteries. Um, so I found Spider's Web. This is by Agatha Christie. This was actually, I think it was written 
for, as a play or something and was adapted into a novel so I actually do have this in a different edition but I liked I liked the look of this copy and the hardcoverness so it was 50 cents I couldn't pass it up and look at that picture of Agatha Christie that's pretty cool and then my other historical mystery is because I could not stop for death this is one of the ones that I was actually anticipating back when it came out I think in the fall or last summer and it is set in January 1855 um, and I think this is a, it's an Emily Dickinson mystery. So I think maybe she becomes our detective or her servant does or something like that. And I really like Emily Dickinson and I really like historical mysteries. So this sounds like a lot of fun and I can't wait to read this one. Then I found three Anne books at my used bookstore that I like to go to. Unfortunately, I didn't get the one they didn't have the one that I really, really want, but I'm gonna keep my eye out every time I go and I'm just like slowly filling in my Anne collection. So I got Akin to Anne, Tales of Other Orphans. So these are just short stories, I believe, that are just kind of in her writing style. The Girl Who Drove the Cows. <laughs> that's, quite the, that's quite the title. Ted's Afternoon Off. And some of these are just like eight pages long or so. They're really short little stories, short stories. I got Along the Shore and Other Tales. So I'm assuming this is also just short stories. Yeah, there's a bunch of them here. The Magical Pond of the Sea, The Life Book of Uncle Jesse, all sorts of short stories there. And this one is an actual novel, A Tangled Web. And I haven't read anything here. It says over the 60 year, six, okay. Over the years, 60 members of the Dark family and 60 Penn Howl Howells have married one another, but not without their share of fighting and feuding. Now Aunt Becky, the eccentric old matriarch of the clan, has bequeathed, bequeathed her prized possession, a legendary heirloom jug, but the name of the jug's new owner will not be revealed for one year. What? I have no idea. I have no idea, but I mean, it's Ella Montgomery, so it's gonna be awesome. Now we are just going on to historical fiction. This is one of the ones that I got from that book sale, and I did share this, like I said, on a Patreon book haul already, but this might be surprising to people that didn't see that. I picked up an Amor Tolls, The Lincoln Highway, and I did not enjoy A Gentleman in Moscow, but I hear that those two books are very different, so I was optimistic, picked this up, hoping this will be quite a bit different than a gentleman in Moscow. Maybe just like that will leave a building. Um, so I actually don't really know anything about it. I read the first like couple sentences. It says in June 1954, 18 year old Emmett Watson is driven home to Nebraska by the warden of the juvenile work farm where he has just served 15 months for involuntary manslaughter. Uh, yeah, that sounds very different. I mean, they're driving already, so they, they've left the building. And the book sale that I went to, soft covers were cheaper than hard covers, so I got the soft cover cover, which is a large print. Not normally what I like to read, but I love when a book lays flat, so this is gonna be a good one to hold while reading. And it is over 500 pages. Uh, this one is like 750, um, but I did see that the smaller, regular sized font was over 500 pages as well. So I'm not just cheating by getting a large print book. Then a book that I actually know zero about, I know, I'm pretty sure it's historical fiction. Wait a minute, is it not? Yeah, I think it's historical fiction. Um, Dear Mrs. Bird, this is like a book that I've had recommended to me so many times. And like I said, I didn't know anything about it. It's an irresistible, debut set in London during World War II about an aspiring journalist who becomes a secret advice columnist. Um, wow, okay. Yeah, I don't I don't really know anything about it other than I've had it recommended to me a few different times. People think I'm going to love it, so I'm willing to listen to the people. And then a, one that I've been curious about this author's books before, and I don't know if I'm going to like, but uh, this one was 50 cents, so it's worth checking it out. Peace Like a River by Leif Anger. Um, I don't remember what his other book is that is also fairly popular, but his books are popular. And I'm just curious. So this one is set, uh, I actually don't know. I'm not even 100% sure it's historical fiction. It is 
at once a heroic quest, a tragedy, and a love story. We are with 11-year-old Reuben Land, an asthmatic boy in the Midwest who has reason to believe in miracles. Along with his sister and father, Reuben finds himself on a cross-country search for his outlaw older brother who has been controversially charged with murder. These sound very similar, and I actually do think that he was born in like the 50s, and this happens in the 50s or something. That's really funny. So, don't know anything more than what I've just read, but I'll give it a try. Okay, now onto my bigger stack here. This is all mostly science fiction, a couple of fantasy books thrown in there as well. Um, I got another Stephen King. I got 11 22 63. This is the Stephen King that I'm like, I think I'll actually enjoy or I'm most likely to enjoy. This one I actually paid like a couple dollars for as opposed to getting it for free. My only downside is that I was really wanting a soft cover. Um, so this is has to do with time travel. I think the present day main character tries to stop the JFK assassination, I think. Um, and it's a chunker. Another one that would be like over 500 pages for sure. We're sitting over 800 here. Um, yeah, so I think I will probably like this one. And then I can kind of like check off the Stephen King box and maybe try it, maybe not. Um, this one is their fairy tale retellings. So the book is called Once by Cameron Doki Doki. I don't even know. Uh, there's three stories in here before midnight golden and wild orchid so we've got cinderella uh, rapunzel i think and mulan and i've heard good things from one of my subscribers and patrons so i thought i would give this a try they also did have the second book the second bind up but i didn't know if i should buy all the books or not so i just bought this one then i went against something that i normally do i bought queen of hearts and i believe this is some kind of alice in wonderland wonderland retelling and i'm not an alice in wonderland fan but i thought maybe a retelling i could enjoy this is pretty short for like a fantasy is just like, just over 300 pages um i don't know anything about it it's not the story of the wonderland we know which actually makes me more optimistic Alice has not fallen down a rabbit hole. This is a wonderland where beneath each smile lies a secret. Each tart comes with a demand and only prisoners tell the truth. I feel like I could like this one maybe. Um, and then I was looking for a book by Lee Bardugo. Uh, I don't remember which one, but I came across this one. I was looking for Six of Crows, but they did have Shadow and Bone, which is the first in the Grisha trilogy. This is like a whole world and universe that I don't know anything about. Um, but a lot of people that I follow on Goodreads had really good ratings of this book and I didn't read the back. I was just like, okay, it's, it's fantasy, possibly YA fantasy, um, maybe not YA. And people that I follow on Goodreads have rated it well, so I thought I'd give it a try. I'm gonna, should we read the first sentence? Because I feel like reading the back of fantasy books can sometimes be confusing, but first I always appreciate a good map, even though I never go back and look at the maps. I like looking at them at the beginning and then I promptly forget about them. Okay, so the first chapter is called Before. The serpents called them, oh no, we're starting with words I can't even say, Mal Malinchki, little ghosts, because they were the smallest and the youngest, and because they haunted the duke's house like giggling phantoms, darting in and out of rooms, hiding in cupboards to eavesdrop sneaking into the kitchen to steal the last of the summer peaches. Well, that was a really long sentence. The sentence was an entire paragraph, but I'm intrigued. Then a book that I've had recommended to me a few times and I've been curious about is The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter. I realized that the used bookstore that I like to go to, they have their um, science fiction and fantasy books that are written by women in a different section. I've missed this section all the time. Um, so I found a few books there and I think this one has to do with something so it's like a Jekyll and Hyde thing because we follow Mary Jekyll um, who I'm assuming is okay we Mary Jekyll alone and penniless following her parents death quickly finds herself drawn into the secrets of her father's mysterious past a clue leads her to believe that Edward Hyde her father's former friend and a murderer may be nearby, and there is still a reward for information resulting in his capture. A reward that would solve all her immediate financial woes. So, I don't know. 
something to do with Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde and then some kind of spin off of that, which I kind of like the idea when books follow the whole taking a story and either continuing it or like retellings and stuff. This one I believe is a fantasy. Um, this one oh, is another one that people that I follow have really good ratings for. It is Red Rising by Pierce Brown and I was actually expecting a thicker book. This one is only not even 400 pages. I feel like every time I start a fantasy series they're always like really big chunkers. Uh, so I don't know anything about it. This is the one I actually paid full price for. On the back here it says, his wife taken, his people enslaved, driven by a longing for justice and the memory of lost love, Darrow will stop at nothing to bring down his enemies, even if he must become one of them to do so. Hmm. Cool. I will have to read it and like actually find out what this is really about. And then I've heard a lot of good things about Na Naomi Novak's Spinning Silver. They didn't have that one, but they had uprooted for a few dollars slash pretty much free because I had credit and I thought I would grab it. I love, I love the covers. Spinning Silver has a really pretty color t cover too. So I think Spinning Silver is Rapunzel retelling, but I don't know what this is. People don't talk about it as much, so I'm assuming it's not as good, but I'm willing to give it a try. I'm assuming it's some kind of fairy tale retelling but it could be completely wrong. And then the last book is uh, by an author that I've read one series by and really enjoyed. So it's Heartless by Marissa Meyer. So she wrote The Lunar Chronicles, which is science fiction fairy tale retellings. Really enjoy that series. And this one, I don't know anything about, but also people that I follow on Goodreads had rated this one really well. So I felt optimistic. Catherine maybe does may be one of the most desired girls in Wonderland. Oh wait, we have another Wonderland book? And a favorite of the unmarried king, but her interests lie elsewhere. A talented baker, she wants to open a shop and create delectable pastries. But for her mother, such a goal is unthinkable for a woman who could be a queen. Okay, I didn't read the back at all until now. So let's try the first sentence of this one randomly. Three luscious lemon tarts glistened up at Catherine. Hmm. I just ate lunch, otherwise I might, that might actually make me hungry. So there you go. That is my haul for February. Um, a lot of books for not a lot of money. I think there was one book that I paid full price for, and then the other ones I paid a total of $10 for. Some of them were free. Some of them I paid a couple dollars, but like a total of $10 for close to 20 books. So that's a, that's a pretty good deal. Um, thanks for being here, guys. Let me know which one of these you think I'll like the most or I should prioritize. Curious to hear that. And then let me know something that you have, a book that you have purchased recently that you're excited to read.